Hey, it's Dane Scott, the Geek Doctor. I like your stethoscope. <laughs> and that's Furby, of course. And today I'll be talking about how bad attitude can kill you on Fiverr. It's coming up next. The Geek Doctor. All right, well, stick around till the end for a special deal on four videos that will really help you to earn more, definitely more than they cost. And a special bonus that'll get you a fifth one for free. It's the Head Slapper Bundle that's coming up. Furby's in the house. Hi, Dane. I can remember going back even to my 20s, getting something new, you know, a sophisticated tool or a computer or whatever, and feeling, uh, well, feeling kind of like it was the enemy at first. It was unfamiliar, kind of alien. And immediately my assumption was, okay, this is not going to be what I wanted. It's not going to do what I wanted. It's going to be too hard to learn. It's going to be hard to use on and on. All right. Well, I'm not a psychologist, so I don't know any fancy terms for this. But let's just call it uh, leery of something new syndrome. And to this day, uh, you know, there are still times when I have a certain amount of that feeling when I'm exposed to something new. What do you do in a situation like that? Uh, that's really what it's all about today. Fiverr starts out like that for a lot of people. So does Upwork. I'm going to be focused on Fiverr today, but really a lot of the principles that I'm going to be talking about could be applied anywhere. So here's the thing. When we first start out in a place like Fiverr, it's with trepidation. Am I a good fit for it? Does it even really work? Are the claims that others have made about it valid? How hard is it to learn? <laughs> Will I be treated well or not so well? Is it going to fit my lifestyle? That's a legitimate question to ask. So, you know, we approach it kind of like it's the edge of a cold lake. And we, you know, dip one toe in. And maybe eventually we go wading, but we never really dive in. Or um, maybe we do submerge ourselves for a while, but it's never long enough to get used to the water. And then we jump out, we shake ourselves off and just say, well, that wasn't for me. But here's the problem. You know, when we tiptoe cautiously around a platform like Fiverr, we're just never going to learn to swim. We've got to be willing to commit. And that commitment isn't just, you know, setting up a gig and seeing what happens. It means going the whole route, learning what works on there, setting yourself up for it, and then doing the work. Otherwise, not much is going to happen. So what really is this gig doctor about this time? Well, it's about attitude. And it's about commitment. And actually, if you think about it, what's the difference between attitude and commitment? Not much. We can claim we're committed, but if we don't adjust our attitude to match the commitment, it isn't going to last very long, is it? First setback, we're gone. All right, here's what happens to me sometimes. I enter into something with a set of expectations that it's not going to work. And when something goes wrong, I just think to myself, yep, just like I figured it'd be. When something else doesn't work out, then that reinforces the attitude. And before long, the accumulative effect is that I've kind of soured on the thing. I can tell you honestly that my experience on Upwork tended like that for a long time. And ultimately, I just had to make the conscious decision that, you know, even if things seemed sour, I was going to make lemonade out of it one way or another. And that's what I started to do. And, you know, as soon as I started doing that, guess what? Not only did I start doing better on the platform, but a lot of that initial sourness went away, and now I'm starting to like and appreciate the platform more. The same thing can be, and really must be, our attitude on Fiverr. But what does that look like? Well, here are five major areas now where a crummy attitude can pretty much guarantee failure on Fiverr. And for the sake of our conversation here, let's turn this around and be positive. So let's say here are five areas where we need to think positively if we're going to succeed. Number one, believing it works. When I came to Fiverr originally, I had heard, you know, success stories of others and, and I was plenty skeptical all the same, but I had enough faith in the platform and in my abilities that I decided that I was going to give it a strong try before I gave up. And it's a good thing I did because otherwise, you know, that first month or so, you know, that first month or two would have driven me away. Let me mention a little principle that I've come to accept almost as an axiom. Everything possible 
that can possibly go wrong is going to happen when you first try something new like Fiverr or anything else to discourage you from continuing it. It might just be coincidence. Uh, it may just be that our lack of experience causes more bad things to happen. But honest to goodness, it really seems almost inevitably that in the first few months of trying something new like Fiverr, everything that can go wrong will go wrong. It almost seems like there's some force of nature that, you know, kicks in to separate the wheat from the chaff and to test who's really strong enough to hang in there. So my advice is, as a level zero seller, expect problems and complications that are going to test your resolve. But keep the faith and keep hammering away. That initial belief in the possibilities and the willingness to stay the course when it gets rough is enormously important on Fiverr and anywhere else. Number two, believe that there really are things that we can do to make the gigs that we offer more effective. A uh, little sidetrack here for a minute. I have a turntable. I've had it actually for decades, but I recently dusted it off and I took up my old record collection, decided to enjoy listening to vinyl again for a while. After all, it's becoming kind of a thing these days. But what I heard when I started listening again was that same kind of flat, lifeless recorded sound that I remembered from listening to records in the good old days. And I was about ready to set the whole thing aside when I decided, you know, there really has to be something to all of the talk I've heard over the years about how great vinyl albums can sound when they're played on the right gear, when they're properly calibrated with a good cartridge, good stylus, good preamp, and so on. And so I decided that uh, before I gave up uh, or let my old opinions and prejudices kick in and cause me to retire the vinyl albums to history again, I would see what I could do to actually make the vinyl sound good. So I ordered a new cartridge and stylus and a new preamp. I ordered a jig. It's this kind of a thing that you can hook up that will let you calibrate everything on the, uh, the turntable, get it all so that everything's lined up properly. I also watched some YouTube videos on how to set the proper weight for the tone arm. <laughs> In short, I'm just trying everything the experts say to do to get great sound out of that turntable. And that's what we need to do on Fiverr when it comes to our gigs. You've undoubtedly heard that a properly equipped and calibrated gig will outperform one that isn't. And that is incredibly true. And you need to believe that with your whole heart. You have to commit to that gig turntable of yours and tweak every single thing that you can to get the best performance out of it that you possibly can. That's an area that I'm strong in. So if I can help on that, be sure to contact me. But assume that there are lots of good things you can do with your gig to make it perform better. That's important. Number three, believe that the benefits on Fiverr are greater than the disadvantages. When I started on Fiverr, I was delivering 250 words of narration for five bucks. It was a strategy, obviously, because nobody with 40 years of uh, narration experience really believes that that's adequate pay, right? But I understood that on Fiverr, it's about the long haul, perseverance, proving ourselves by doing great on order after order. That really is the most important thing, especially at first. Uh, but during that early time, as I mentioned, I suffered setbacks and frustrations. Part of it was just not being used to the platform, having to kind of grope around, find things, figure things out. Part of it was dealing with some less than agreeable lowball customers. We all get those at first. If I didn't have an overriding faith that in the end, the benefits would outweigh the disadvantages, I wouldn't have lasted there as long as I have. Uh, and ultimately, yeah, it's good. I did over six figures there the last couple years. So you just have to keep the faith that the merits outweigh whatever warts and flaws you feel the platform has, and you keep looking for ways that you can improve rather than focusing on areas where you feel like Fiverr needs to improve. Uh, number four, we need to view ourselves positively, but realistically. You've probably been uh, told by teachers or success mavens that, uh, you know, if you have faith in your abilities, nothing can hold you back and that you can accomplish unlimited things with the right attitude. Well, I'm not going to say that because I kind of think it's nonsense. Each of us is blessed with certain abilities, yes. 
But it's up to us to identify realistically what those abilities are. Not everybody's good at everything. And, you know, you could spend your whole life trying to hone a skill that you just aren't uh, tuned to. And you're never going to be as good at it as someone who's just, it comes naturally to them. So we need to identify what our real skills are and then identify what we can do to make them better, hone them until they're really truly good enough to justify offering them for sale to others. Until you have something of real worth, you just can't expect to make a lot of money offering your services on Fiverr or anywhere else. The problem is that uh, we're the world's worst judge of our own value. Some may think uh, that they're way better at something than they really are. And some may see their value as far less than it really is. That's that whole, you know, imposter syndrome thing. That's why I think it's good to get tied in with a professional in your particular field, the one that you're pursuing, who can evaluate your offers and give you honest, solid feedback on what you currently offer and how you can improve it. When you're confident you have something of value, well, guess what? That confidence is going to carry over into every aspect of your work on Fiverr. You'll even communicate more confidently with buyers. So if you're already on Fiverr, fine, stay the course, but keep seeking feedback and instruction from others to make what you offer even more awesome. Ultimately, the quality of what you do and the amount that you earn are very closely tied together. And number five, believe in the value of buyers. I'm saying it that way because I want to put it in a positive light. One of the biggest mistakes we can make as sellers on Fiverr or anywhere is to view the buyer as the enemy, the person on the other side of the wall, uh, who we need to force to our will and to get as much out of as we can. That's a negative and adversarial approach to sales that will hurt you badly over time. It will keep people from coming back we need to step around the wall and shake their hand and call them by name and, and get to know them and understand their needs and work together to fulfill those needs uh, to the mutual benefit of uh, both them and us. That's how we're going to build our business on Fiverr and elsewhere. Uh, by the way, I do have a video that's specifically about this subject. Um, it, we call it uh, Joining the Buyer's Tribe, and I'll try to flash a thing up on the screen if I remember at the end here uh, so that you can check out that video too. Okay, are you done? Pretty much. Those are the five areas that can either kill us or cause us to thrive on Fiverr, depending on our attitude. All right, so now as promised, well, I guess you could say these are the other five things now. Uh, the four video head slapper bundle at a discount, and then a fifth one, head slapper five for free. These are all my very best techniques for earning more money on Fiverr, and you can get the whole batch for $100 less than they would cost separately by following the special link in the notes accompanying this gig doctor. Uh, you won't even need the uh, coupon code. Uh, if you just follow the head slapper bundle at that link, you're going to get the savings, simple as that. Okay, time to feed Furby. Feed me. Furby's only source of nutrition is comments, so let's not starve him today. Leave a comment. And uh, you can, for today, for this one, tell me what attitude areas you struggle with the most on Fiverr. And be sure to give us a thumbs up here and hit subscribe uh, so that you get these all the time. And if you would like to get together for a really intensive session of personalized help, we can do a Gig Doctor together. Visit thegigdoctor.com for more information on that. I'm Dane Scott. Catch you on the next one. Hello. Hello. Hello, I think. Hello, cutie pie. Until I heard the voice, I'd never done a crazy thing in my whole life. Goodbye. <laughs>